So the debate, what did you think about uh, the, the, the first and second night of the, the second debate? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think they went pretty well. I mean, I, I really think, um, well, first we could talk about, you know, your, your preferred candidate, Tulsi. She did very well in the first debate. She took Tim Ryan to school. Um, I think she started out kind of slow, but then picked it up by the end. And she really exposed him and had probably the biggest moment of the night. Um, and then in the second debate, I think, uh, I think Bernie really, really, you know, brought down the house because I'm pretty Tim sure. About behind the scenes, what's that? Tim looked like he was about to cry by the oh, time. Oh, for that, sure. Tim, Tim like, Ryan. Bro, again? Like, again? <laughs> didn't, didn't he like semi drop out? Like I heard he. He did a thing like he went on MSNBC after one of the mass shootings and was like, I'm suspending my presidential campaign. And Whatever I interpreted that as he's dropping out. But everybody else didn't. I don't know how that's that's the p political way of saying I'm dropping. How does I'm dropping out sound? It sounds like I'm a quitter. But like when you say I'm like Swallow suspended his campaign, too. Where's Swallow? Swallow? Yeah, exactly. He's changing his baby's <laughs> diaper and recording it to make another ad out of it because he's creepy. <laughs> He wants to be like he wants to like call the call the millennial vote so bad like oh, he he's so, but we all hate him yeah like bro you you we you can you look fake you look like a fake person yeah, he yeah. literally looks like it was put together like, he wakes um, up in the morning and like tells his wife his talking points he's just so on script all the time and it's really awkward like they don't understand basically the opposite of everything Swalwell's doing is what we want out of a candidate. Basically. Like, just don't be Swalwell. If Swalwell said, I'm going to do the opposite of what my instinct is every time, then he would be decent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, shit, the same could be said for about, what, 97, 98% of the other candidates. Because, uh, or actually, no, I lied. Joe Biden needs to fucking find a script and stick to it. He needs to read directly off the script. Because this By is getting the way, worse. He did it sad. again today, right before you and I started talking. I just looked at Twitter. He said that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and RFK got assassinated in like the late 1970s or something. He said this in a speech in the place, I think where they got it or where one of them got assassinated. He said back oh in the God. 70s and the late 70s. <laughs> oh my God. See, I'm glad he didn't say on the debate. Like it's getting to the point. So people are asking me, well, why won't Tulsi attack Joe Biden the same way he attacked Kamala Harris? And I know you feel the same way I do. Joe Biden is not a threat to, in, to anybody in this race. He's you know, a threat from their perspective a lot of that they were saying that. That he is or not is well, not that that he isn't a threat. So it's like almost like they feel bad when somebody attacks it, him. Exactly, because that's because because so it, especially because so her sister was in the room and I asked her like, well, so how do you feel about the debate in like their, the individual performance of the establishment? And they were like, bruh, I feel like I, like everybody was just attacking grandpa. Like I felt bad. <laughs> everybody just felt bad because like, bro, how can you, I can't be vicious towards somebody who literally cannot defend himself. But here's the, thing. Like, <laughs> here's the thing, though, that we need to understand, because we're a little bit biased in the circles that we run in, that mm -hmm. older people, older Democrats, they fuck with Biden. They like they Biden. Do. They you do. Know? And, and again, I would argue that's what I call default support. Those are people who are maybe not too involved in politics, but they do vote in every election. And then if you ask them, hey, who are you voting for? They'll be like, I don't know who's running. Oh, Biden's running. OK, I like Biden. And like yeah. that, that's the thought process. They don't even watch the debates sometimes. They don't even watch the debates. And they're not catching the highlights on social media. They're just listening to what their friends, oh, who did well in the debates? And their friends like, oh, Biden did pretty well, I heard. Yeah, the Biden, Biden did good. The news also said Elizabeth Warren did well, so I'm assuming she did well also. Like the night that Bernie, I didn't think that Bernie necessarily won the first debate. I think that he won in the sense that everybody had to echo his policies in order for them to seem relevant. But as far as um, like, Standing out, obviously it was Kamala, and I would even say to a, a degree it was Mary Williamson. But in the second debate, it was a runaway for Bernie. And yeah, then and you know what? The, go ahead. They said good. They said behind the scenes, I think Bernie, you got to get more aggressive because that first debate, Kamala went for Biden's throat, and and it worked. Yes. She nailed him. She nailed him, and she saw a giant boost in fundraising. And so I think that Bernie's campaign behind the scenes, they were like, listen, Bernie. Not for nothing, that could be you. Like, you could have gone after Biden. You could have went for his throat on TPP, on NAFTA, on the Iraq war, on all these different things. But you didn't really do it. So now Kamala got her moment in the sun. So now you got to pick it up. And then obviously he did pick it up. And and basically it, Tim Ryan's whole purpose is to serve as the punching bag for, Tol for Tulsi and Bernie. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to send him a gift bag, like, man. Of course I know. I wrote the damn bill.
talking about the medical. Oh my god, yeah. Was, said, I don't like, know why he asked him that. Money. Yeah, like, like you don't know what your bill is going to do in the bill that you wrote that you've been helping to write for the last I don't know how many years of your life. Like Tim, do you know before you just assume that? You know, exactly. and and by the way, he was a co-sponsor of that bill, Tim Ryan. He was because remember when oh, the we, house we, version of, of yes, because we had wow. a giant campaign, just as Democrats did, where we were like trying to force all the Democrats to get on board with Medicare for all. And what happens is when you put public pressure on people, they really do buckle when they feel like, oh my God, like this is insane. I get calls to my office every six seconds. I got to do something. But obviously just liars. And Kamala is the same thing. Kamala said the other day, she backpedaled even harder than she's been backpedaling on Medicare for all to the point Which where she, she said like, oh, I, I'm not I'm not on board with Bernie's bill. I have concerns with Bernie's bill. You signed on to Bernie's bill. Concerned. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, she... The first town hall. Let me be clear. Let me be very, very clear about something. Medical or health care is a right, and I do support Medicare for all. Blah blah blah. And then she backtracked the next day, and then people were like, "Well, we think she's for Medicare for all." And then she pretty much killed though that sentiment because she got on stage and was like, "I have my own bill now." I don't understand. Why do you have your own bill if you were just for Bernie's bill? Because if if it's not Bernie's bill and it's not Jaya Powell's bill in the House, they have no idea what the hell you're introducing with a 10-year transition. And she said, literally, she said this. She said, because, you know, they got their, their anecdotal talking points. And I swear to God, if I hear another anecdote on that debate stage, I'm almost like, bruh, I don't even feel bad for people anymore by the end of the debate. I'm, I know this person. God damn it. Who is this person that everybody, that y'all all seem to know? It's the same family. They all got problems. And I get so tired of hearing about this damn family. Fix their problems. I don't know if they're representative of the rest of the country, but fix their damn problems. But she thought I were her little story. And she said, we don't have, diabetics don't have time to wait. And my Medicare for all plan has a 10-year transitional period. I'm like, bitch, hold up, bitch. Wait a minute. What you just, they going to be dead. You just said <laughs> She don't even hear it because the, the like you said, there's they're talking points. That's all they are. And then I'm gonna realize how ridiculous they sound. And um, which is why I'm glad that and that's one of the more underrated parts of the debate where Tulsi called out Kamala and was like, Hold up, what you just say? Who's writing your bill? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. That's that's Obamacare part two, guys. As Obamacare, and nobody really caught that. And then Kamala tried to call her a liar. And I think that was part of the reason why Tulsi went off on her the way she did. Um, because she tried to call her a liar and then turned around and tried to ignore her right after that. I don't know if you remember that. I and do. And then after what Kamala said after really pissed me off because she, she brought up, first of all, of course, what did she do? She brought up Syria and then she had the nerve to say like, I'm like a top tier candidate. And she's like, you know, whatever. It's like, did you just say that out loud? Do you not understand <laughs> that this is not like a thing? You can't say something like that, especially because Tulsi went through a list of stuff. And she really got her on criminal justice. I think she got her even better because she hit oh her with, um, you know, like laughing about marijuana and locking somebody up. She may have even said the dude's name who she like locked up and then tried to. Force oh, no. To so the dude prison. actually tweet. He created a Twitter account. It's a black dude created a Twitter account literally the next day. And he tweeted a picture of himself. And he's like, I was and I was that black man to Kamala. Like I was like. Oh shit! And it's crazy that no, that that didn't get the traction that it should have got. I'm like, bruh. So hold well, on, we just going to ignore the fact that this evidence. They said she withheld evidence to keep a man on death row. That's he was going to die. The, the media. <laughs> they have their favorites, and they're pushing their favorites. And listen, that's one of the theories as to also why Joe Biden still has that lead in the polls is because they have their their candidates that they support. And the thing that annoys me is. They pretend like support for Biden and support for Kamala is non-ideological. And like, what do you mean? Like, we support them because like, oh, obviously Biden is the most electable candidate. That's why we support him. And it's is. like, well, first of all, that's based on nothing. Like, you're basing that on absolutely Literally. nothing. Okay. Um, second of all, like, no, you do, stop pretending like you're not a centrist and you're not a neoliberal. Like, you are, that's what you are, and that is your philosophy. Like, you would admit to your audience, listen, I'm coming from a left wing perspective. I admit to my audience, listen, I'm coming from a left wing perspective. This is how I see the world. They pretend like, no, 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 no. I'm just giving the facts. I'm just being objective. And oh, yeah, I support Biden. I support Kamala Harris. And it's like, it's disingenuous in multiple ways. It's disingenuous because they're not being honest about their perspective. And it's disingenuous because they'll also try to twist the facts to support their candidates and try to ignore, like you were saying, the reality about what happened in that debate, where it's like, well, we know that Tulsi hit Kamala over the head with facts. 
about her own record and about how terrible it is, stuff that really nobody can defend. And instead of acknowledging that and then discussing that and saying, hey, this was a really good moment. Hey, look, she's the most Googled candidate. Instead of doing that, they did the exact opposite, which is they try to craft, they try to create the world that they want while pretending they're just describing it as it is. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, like with the Elizabeth Warren thing. Like, let's be honest. Elizabeth Warren basically tried her hardest to ride Bernie's coattails. And she even tried, why are we using right-wing talking points? And I was like, but Liz, you won't even say the words Medicare for all on stage. People haven't caught that yet. I, you know, there's certain buzzwords we all listen to as progressives, especially when you're in the media like we are, where like, and Medicare for all is one of those words. Um, just like I noticed they didn't ask Elizabeth Warren about foreign policy at all. That's twice in a row they didn't do that, which is by design because she's just absolutely horrendous on foreign policy. And after the debate, the post-debate, they were having their discussion. And they were like, I think that Elizabeth Warren really stood out here. I think she clearly ran away with the debates. She separated herself ideologi ideologically from the crowd. She offered her, she made her, she clearly separated herself as a progressive contender, as one of the top two progressive candidates. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm like, did everybody just see what I, the, the debate that I just saw? Where it was literally Elizabeth Warren's following behind Bernie like a puppy dog. Like, what do we say next, Bernie? What do we say next? <laughs> well, you know, like, because I mean, do you know what, what, what one policy, what, what did she talk about? And everybody like, well, she had a substantive discussion. Well, what was it about? Because I don't, I didn't hear any policies. So I thought so she did a good job because she, she was just pun punching John Delaney in the face repeatedly, which admittedly so, yeah, is from not from that hard. perspective. Yeah, it's not from that perspective. Do. Yeah, but she but, did go ahead, go ahead. do that. What was the line that she had? Oh, she was like the right wing talking who, point. Who runs for president and just talks about things we can't do and shouldn't try? That mm -hmm. that was a good that was a good haymaker that she landed on him. But yeah, I mean, she definitely. I don't think she outperformed Bernie. I think that the reason why the media, maybe m most of them, did say she outperformed Bernie is because. They want that to be the case because she's exactly. safer than him. So in the same way that they pump up Kamala and Biden, they'll pump her up as like, OK, absolute worst case scenario. If Kamala fails and Biden fails, OK, fine, we'll accept this. But don't you dare go any further left than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And actually, that's slightly unfair to her because I do think. In some ways, she has a decent track record, like on Wall Street and regulation. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button to get all of our notifications if you like that episode of Mikasa Sukasa. You can also help continue to grow our show by donating to our Patreon and helping us hit our goal of 500 patrons. But remember more than anything else, find your balance. Peace.